Listen, I want you all to meet somebody. Hey, Pam. Yo, Pam, come in, baby. Come in. This is my friend, Pam. Hi. She's my girlfriend. <laughs> I'm right here. There he is. <laughs> I can hear you. I can see you. You're all good looking. You guys, it's like you're in a high school classroom now. <laughs> That's how I feel. Life you're is a classroom, Gene. Ah. <laughs> That's my cue, isn't it? Yeah. You're the guy that does the intros. Melanie, you can see what a professional atmosphere we've got here in this <laughs> lovely pod. I literally just got done eating dinner, too. This is a, We're off schedule here, fellas. I know. Well, let's, I know. let's get going. What did you have for dinner? Uh, I, I had some chili that my wife made. It was very delicious. Are you right. just saying it was delicious so she can hear you? No, it was. She, she does a great job at chili. No, she can't hear me. What kind of chili? Are we uh, it was beef, and it had some garbanzo beans and some red kidney beans in it. You put wow. garbanzo was, beans in Yeah, that's right. It's unusual. Is it Texas chili? What kind of chili? It's definitely not Texas chili, because okay. it was ground beef. It had a little bit of cinnamon and turmeric in it, so it was oh, all wow. that's, that's Ohio. Ohio. Healthy chili. Yeah, maybe a little Ohio. I had soup. You just had soup. soup? Yeah, it's cold. I'm I guessing Melanie hasn't had dinner yet. No, it's early. I'm three hours right? in. Oh, what do you have on the menu for the evening? I'm thinking maybe a chicken teriyaki. Maybe a little sushi. It's LA. Oh, you had me a teriyaki. <laughs> We had some uh, fried rice delivered earlier. You win. That's oh, a winner. Working yeah. hard over there. All right. So let's get this show on the road. So Jimmy's locked, freezing up again. Or am I the only one seeing that? Yeah, I see it too. Yeah, yeah he's freezing. There he is. 63 <laughs> episodes in. I'm starting to think your network sucks. Oh, yeah. If your introduction, he's locked up again. We'll attempt this intro. And if you freeze up, I'll keep an eye on it. And we'll have you redo that part. You ready? Right, go for it. Weird. I'm going to stop you there. Buddy, Jimmy. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> we already got the comedy going. What am I here. supposed to do here? Good evening, weirdos. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Living Cruddy. I'm your host, Freddy Jimmy. As always, joined by the inimitable Vinny Scrams, or however you say his name, I'm not even sure, and the lovely and talented and always sexy Gino Roy. This week, our guest... We're so excited. We want to welcome Melanie Hinneman to the show. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. I think this is the first time we've spoken to anybody from the Friday the 13th camp. As yeah. much as we discuss it and watch it and, and, and uh, go on about that, I don't think we've had anybody on. This is the first Friday the 13th person, right? I think so, yeah. Okay. Well, awesome. You're our inaugural Friday the 13th person. Well, I'm honored. Wow. A first at something. Yeah. Well, you were, of course, in Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning. Yes. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? That is correct. That was, in my opinion, the, the last of the good ones, I thought. And tell me if I'm out of line. There was a steady flow of good flicks up through that point. And then there's some people that like the one after that, number six. But then after that, they just kind of lost their minds with it. Oh, yeah. Well, I agree. I think one through five were the best. They had a whole feel and a look about them that they lost, in my opinion, they lost later on down the road. Uh, I'm a little partial. I think part five was one of the better ones. Though I do like part four. I think the first five are all, obviously the first one is the legendary one. The subsequent ones, each one has that their own little thing that makes them special. Yours in particular, and there are people that bash a little bit. I don't get that. I, it's one of the most yeah. entertaining, most steady yeah. of the movies. And it's the one that brings a whole bunch of new elements to it. And obviously, everybody knows about what they tried to do with Roy. I think it would have been interesting had that path continued on. Yeah, it was something different. I think it was courageous to break formula and try something different. It's unfortunate we get so much hate for it. People just love Jason so much. For them, it was about him. Through every movie, it was about Jason. Yeah. I think Paramount found that out. They but. tried something different and they thought that their formula was so great that they could try something different. Yeah, we get a lot of hate. I still get hate and I address it very simply. I say, listen, people, it's just a movie. Calm down. That's the ultimate answer. Mm -hmm. Well, at least it's stuck with the Jason format. And at this point, four films in, what are you going to do now? Now, we've killed him already so I think kudos for trying something a little different it wasn't like what had happened with Halloween 3 were totally different I don't know how you get to hate I get I find a lot of friends and, and people that, that love part 5 well, it's different but it still keeps it going well it's getting more love now but I can tell you the last 20 years it's taken a while to get the hate to dissipate 
I was surprised. My first convention was Monster Mania in, in Baltimore, and, and I had not been out to have that onslaught of hate coming at me in person. So it was alarming. I didn't really know why. I've learned over the years why. It's a whole Jason thing. But the hate seemed to really escalate. Now it's kind of falling back, and people are starting to like it for various different reasons, and the nostalgia and all that. But the hate was intense. And I still think there's a lot of it there. Well, if you're going to see that movie just to see another Jason, you might be disappointed. I just think that in anybody that tries something different to keep your interest up and you don't just fall into the sleep mode of, I'm waiting for Jason to show up. That particular movie asked the question, what the hell is going on here? Because we know Jason died. That was really the first time that he was like fully done at that point. What's going on? Who is this guy? Why has the mask changed? Why has all that stuff happened? And I think that keeps you interested right up to the end. And I'll be honest, when they when you guys finally unmask Roy, it's like, holy shit, I wasn't expecting that at all. You guys kept it going. I mean, you got a, a ton of kills and for people who like the kills they're they're all very creative obviously it was filmed in california which i think that was the last one prior to yeah, the next one was filmed in georgia wasn't it? you could be right yeah i'm not up on part six yeah, so I'm yours was the last one that was filmed in the you, you know, in jersey of california those have the original look and feel to them and then they started disappearing into georgia and alabama and places that didn't really look like a friday the 13th environment hmm, interesting so, so those are the honest looking ones the story is pretty honest i don't they don't try to convince you that he just came back again. No, and Friday the 13th Part 5 is Quentin Tarantino's favorite. He has said repeated, <clears throat> I'm throwing that out there. Yes, <laughs> he thinks it's the best of the franchise. Probably because it's so dark and creepy. Yeah, no, that's valid. I've never been one of the ones that thought that that was some issue to not have Jason. He, Jason wasn't really in the first one until the last, you know, couple seconds. There you go, you're right, yes. I have two problems with Part 5. Uh -oh. um, I think the writers did a disservice to all these great characters that are in the film. It's not some teenagers in the woods now. It's, it's the setting is amazing and all these different characters here and they're not written well they're just not, not it, could have, it could have been a longer movie and I think with Pam and Matthew I'm thinking there's a backstory here mm -hmm. you guys believe in this whole concept with the institution you right. probably had to deal with all this in the past people giving you problems you believe in your mission uh, to, to help these guys and, and each one's got their own personality each um, one's crazy in his own way it's a loony bin <laughs> and there's there's the scene where you're in the truck going to see Reggie's uh, brother and it's just the, the truck's just going. It's not going to a bad scene or anything. They're just going to see Reggie's brother. And that music, it sounds like you're being chased by Jason in, in a tank. It's like, it's way too dramatic. That's stupid. That scene is pretty funny because they show the road, you zip by one stretch of road, then it kind of repeats, then it kind of repeats again. Where are these guys going? Look like they're just going around in circles. Then all of a sudden you're there at the, I guess it's a trailer park or something. Yeah, we were going in circles. I had to keep running the truck, backing it up, running the truck, backing it up. I said, I can do my own stunt. Let me do that. Yeah. <laughs> there was much more written when I did the auditions and then when I did the role. Very early on, they said, we got to cut a lot of this stuff to make room for more kills. I had never seen a Friday the 13th movie. I didn't know what it was about, really. It was just a great thing for me. I mean, I had a lead role and a paramount thing. I went to see part four, so I knew what I was getting into. But I was very disappointed when they cut so many characters for kills. Yeah. And then the kills, some of the kills had to be cut because they were too graphic. Yeah. So there was so much that. going on while we were shooting this thing for two, three months. And then the ratings board came in and said, no, that kill's got to go and that's got to go. And I'm thinking, you just cut one of my scenes for a kill and the kill's gone. Honestly, I could have done without the, the two greaser guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was, I was just going to bring those guys up. People love them. I don't get it. Yeah. So you didn't like them either? I thought that were a big waste of time, but let me I, tell you, people love them. I, my dad took me to see this movie and, you know, we're watching it and then the scene where the, the guy and the girl on, on the couch. And my dad looks at me like, yeah, that guy's really good, you know? Then a couple minutes later, he's dead. And my dad's like, well, I like him. I didn't, you know. But I agree about the, the two greaser guys. If you watched the entire run of the Friday the 13th movies and you hadn't seen them before, you somebody would ask, which movie was that part in? You'd be like, Shit, I don't remember. It has nothing to do with anything else. Out of nowhere, yeah. Yeah, it's so weird they snuck it in. That's a good long scene. You probably could have got a, quite a bit more of the feature Something. actors in there. Something, yeah. Like, remove that. Yeah, yeah. And the other part that's really weird and and strange about that is that the Friday 13th was on their run of continuing to have people taking a dump in the movies and they had to yeah. show those guys doing that. Yeah. And that was I don't get it. 
<laughs> I don't get it. There's two scenes. Yeah, they had two scenes in that movie with that. Yeah, with the guy yeah. in the uh, outhouse was enough. Miguel Nunez, yeah. <laughs> At least he's, he had lived a song. He was so embarrassed. He thought, I'll start singing. Yeah. That part is classic just for that singing, too. Yeah. We're, we're going to try to get Jimmy to do that singing for you here. <laughs> so, Melanie, according to this book, and you folks at home that don't have this, you really need it. You've probably seen the documentary, but nothing can compare to it. You, you said that you were signed on to do part six. Yeah, I was signed to do five and six. So was John Shepard. Okay. So, uh, when I started filming part five, I knew I was going on to another film. When we wrapped part five, they said, we're going to start part six in a couple of months. We'll be in contact you a month from right now, and we'll get you the script and everything. In the course of waiting for that to happen, I got a phone call from my agent that John Shepard who played Tommy Jarvis, decided he didn't want to do horror movies anymore. So he did not want to do part six. He was done. He didn't feel that that kind of violence was good for humanity. So that left me with nothing because they said, well, Paramount called and said, look, we wanted to continue the story where we left off part five, that final frame of me standing there with him behind me. They were going to pick up part six right at that. So it would have been interesting. So instead of maybe getting another Tommy, they scrapped the whole thing. They had to pay me, but it would have been great to have done both films. I have not seen part six. I hear it's great, but I'm not going. (laughs) Yeah, I'm of the camp that says what you guys had planned would have been better. With yeah. it. I know people love part six. They like oh, the whole comedy great. angle, but there in Georgia, it looks like here. It just doesn't look right to me. And it's just extremely ridiculous. I would it's have loved to see the continuation of your story. There's only one good thing about me not getting six. I am forever alive. I go. have not been killed. I am <laughs> for eternity. Good. And I'm a final girl that will live forever. So it seemed like they were going to go with Tommy becoming the new killer. Right. We didn't get far enough to find find out if he was going to kill me. So I don't know if I was going to live in part six. If they were to come back now and say, we want to pursue that avenue, what would you say? Absolutely. But awesome. they would have to change a lot of it because now I'm older. Current settings would be great. I mean, that's an unfinished storyline. Yeah. The way they do these movies, the whole Halloween thing, they jump around so much. Jimmy's like, I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. I guess I could still be a, a shrink <laughs> in a halfway house. I don't know. And if <laughs> you did that movie, we could figure out what was going on with your sweater in the last couple of that's, minutes. That's damn thing. <laughs> The major film company, Paramount, and they can't get an editor to... Uh, uh. How did that go? You, you obviously, at one point, were running around with it, and at some other point, you were running around. Which came first, the with it or without it? I was running with it, which I argued in the beginning that I would not have this effing sweater on when I'm running for my life. It would either have fallen off or something. You take it off, the rain's coming, and they wanted me dressed up. If you look, I even have a freaking watch on. <laughs> I have the watch on till the end of the film. That. All that stuff should have been gone. But anyway. So you can tell what time it is. In the beginning, I'm running. They have the sweater on. I I said it should be taken off. The director said, just run. It did fall off, which was a natural thing. So they shot the rest of the film with it off, which was the majority of the shooting. I mean, we shot for days and days. It was a night shoot, you know, with a rain machine. So I don't know why they took footage from the beginning. They had so much footage, so much footage of me running in the rain. Why are you taking the early stuff? So it was the 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 most likely answer answer was the answer that you had it and then they just edited it all away. I, I wasn't sure. I was envisioning where it was possibly you were out there running, the rain machines are going, you're starting to freeze. Say, well, how about we add some sweater yeah. to this so I could stay warm? No, <laughs> the opposite. It started with the sweater on. I come out of the truck, I'm running and the sweater falls off naturally. About 30 mm-hmm. years I've been watching a movie and never noticed that. <laughs> Well, then that's good. I get get too much into the movie just watching the the whole thing go down. So, Well, that's good because in an interview, I bitched about that. I said, you mean really the editor couldn't get this right? And the editor said if she were a better actress, they would have not noticed that her sweater was coming on and off. They would have... Well, Vinny didn't notice. They would have been engrossed in what she was doing and not about the sweater. Yeah, that has nothing to do with the continuity department, does it? No. Could be them. Uh, granted, that there's a ton of movies that have those issues, in it, but it's, and once you see it, you can never unsee it again. I mean, for a Friday the 13th film, there's a, there's a lot of kills in this. So mm-hmm. um, it's it's not boring. It's a hell of a lot of fun. And you got the hillbilly mom and dad. It makes up for a lot of uh, inconsistencies as well. Well, not only that, but the, the guy that comes and shows up on their property. Yeah. 
<laughs> What's up with that guy? Yeah, he came and went. It was interesting, though. <laughs> I thought it was Clint Eastwood when I first saw it. Oh, there had to have been more to that story. It had to have been <laughs> left on the editing. Yeah, they should have fleshed out that story because he was the most interesting character, in my opinion. Well, he could have added something. you got to wonder where that was going. I mean, there he is, and then all of a sudden, just they kill him off. Well, they kill him off in the uh, scene that got parodied by uh, John LaJoy. I assume everybody's seen that. Yeah. The video? The video, right. Yeah. But they didn't put him in that part. They should have. Well, no doubt they should have answered why he was there to begin with. I'm interested in what Melanie's take is on that video because I think that's a really cool tune. It's a great video. Yeah. I love it. So what can you tell us about being on Hill Street Blues and Cheers? Hill Street is was my favorite show. Yeah. And it was the first gig I got when I first moved to L.A. And I got to work with Keel Martin, who was one of my favorite actors. That production was done like a, an A-list movie. And it was shot on film. Most shows at that time were shot on tape. Everything was perfect. So that was great. Cheers was more of an experience for me because it's a week rehearsal. And then you shoot in front of a live audience on Friday night. I worked with some of the greatest actors there. John Rath. Ratzenberger, Woody Harrelson. I mean, these were great people. So I got to work with them all week. And then we shot three cameras in front of a live audience on Friday night. I'm from the theater in New York. So it was like doing a, a Broadway show. So I saw that you had a credit on SNL early on as well. Yes, that was in the good old days. John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd. And I was playing Cheryl Ladd. I don't know if you guys are too young to remember. Battle of the Network Stars. They had all kinds of stars. And I played Cheryl Ladd and John Belushi played Charlie you know, Charlie's Angels. Gilda Radner. It was mind-blowing. The musical guests were the Rolling Stones. Awesome. How much better is that? I'm in my mid-20s. I've been watching the show for five years. I'm on the show, and the Rolling Stones are the guest musical guests. When they told me the Rolling Stones were the musical guests, I thought, it doesn't get any better than this. Oh, that's awesome. Did you ever run into Cheryl Ladd? No, I didn't, but I think I will. (laughs) She's doing conventions now, so I will. Did you know that would probably be around the time when uh, Stones had um, what album? Oh, that was the next one after Some Girl. 79. 1979. I don't remember. Tattoo You. Tattoo You, yeah. They had one album before Tattoo You. Between Tattoo You and Some Girls. What was that one? My way back machine here. The Googles. Jimmy, it looks like you have a tan. No, no, it's the lighting. Mm. Ah! I'm pale as ever. Good lighting. Ah, good hair and makeup. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Only the best. All right, yeah, there was. Emotional Rescue was the record. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't very good. Well, Google is a great thing. Wow. Oh, no, the mm-hmm. Emotional Rescue was a good record. I mean, it was better uh-huh. than some of the stuff they've come out with since, and they yeah, they didn't play anything. Out. They played something off. They played first. Beast of Burden. Yeah, they played Beast of Burden, didn't they? Yeah. They were probably getting ready for tattoo you. Then. Keith Richard was speaking, and I didn't understand a word he said. And I'm usually good with that stuff. He needed a translator. That. <laughs> All I can say is, I wish I was there for that. That must have been something. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh, so Melanie, this is up to you if you want to talk about this or not. But I think it's very important. A few years ago, and I didn't even know this was happening until I saw your post about the whole Harvey Weinstein issue. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I try to make a joke now. But it's not, none of it is funny, but I say that I survived Jason Voorhees and Harvey Weinstein all in the same year. He is possibly the worst thing that happened to me in Hollywood. Hollywood's a very difficult place for anyone, but especially women. You've heard that a million times, but I've lived it. I have to say that there were other people before him, but he was the worst in that I was going for what I thought was a very important audition for him at Miramax. And it was in an office. It wasn't that horrible story. I hear people go to hotel rooms. I never would have done that. And when I got there, it was just he and I alone. And I was supposed to read a scene with him and he ripped my clothes off. I mean, before I even opened my mouth. I had this very expensive dress. It was my audition dress, you know. I stood up and he grabbed the dress from the middle crotch area and just ripped it off my body. So you kind of go in shock, but I have a thing that I've always had since I was a kid that I can face something when it's happening and I go into this survival thing and I'm very calm. It's after the fact that that it becomes a big trauma. So in it, I was able to gather myself. I got out of the room. He slammed the door so I couldn't get out. And he said, don't be ridiculous because I can destroy you. And I didn't care at that moment. I just needed to get out of the room. So I left. I immediately tried to report it. I told my agent and he said to me, you can't tell anybody about this. I said, well, at the least I want to tell Screen Actors Guild. And he said, you have to take this to your grave. He's very powerful and he can destroy you. Well, he did anyway. So I probably should have, in hindsight, reported it and done what I thought was best because he did keep me from working anyway. 
So I was blacklisted for at least 10 years. That's terrible. I couldn't, I couldn't work at many, many studios wouldn't even see me for auditions. He was that powerful. Now, I didn't think I was important in the whole thing, the whole scope of it, because he had so many women. But he was vindictive in that he did keep me from working and he did try to destroy me. And I was how I wasn't important. So I really don't know. It's very hard to talk about. I don't yeah. know the reason why he felt the need to do that. Because there were so many other girls that Gwyneth Paltrow and that already had careers. And I don't know why he chose to do that to me because I was just starting out. But I should have reported it because the same thing happened. I didn't report it because my agent said he'll, he'll ruin you. And I wanted to, at the minimum, to screen actors killed. But the good news is I'm still here. I'm still doing it. And he's not. Nope. No. <laughs> he's not. And he's right. And he's in prison. He had a very long reach. And he kept me from working at a lot of studios. Paramount was the only place that he couldn't get to. So I still have an affinity for them. The first is they gave me a great role in Friday Part 5. And I did all the stuff for them afterwards, after the Harvey thing. So, But Harvey wasn't the only one. He was the worst mm -hmm. in my But he's not the only one out there. And I think we're finding out more and more about the others. But you'd be surprised how many it's still happening you'd be surprised <laughs> sorry to go off on that but no, no we appreciate you talking you, about it yeah you had something to share with somebody who encountered that now what would you share with them what advice would you have oh immediately report it don't let anybody tell you that you have to keep your mouth shut that was the worst thing right and i was told that it, oh and the worst thing was my agent at the times asked me well what did you do why did he do that and that really was upsetting. No, yeah, blame uh, the victim. Yeah, yeah uh, I would tell them to to have the courage and to go with their yeah. gut feeling and to report it and to get help and to know it's not their fault. It wasn't your fault that you were there and you didn't go looking for it and you didn't ask for it when you walked in because they like to say to me, "Well, you must have projected something when you walked in the room." I said, "No, I was going to an audition and I thought I was reading a role." So that you need to know that it's never your fault. So we're Working towards stamping out that culture, you know, share what you experience and don't listen to people that are trying to stamp don't it out. Listen to people. Yeah. yeah, you have to do what your gut tells you to do. You have to go with your instincts and you have to protect yourself. I should have gone and gotten help. That's what I should have done. I right. shouldn't have listened to Hollywood. I shouldn't listen to my agents. I should have gone directly to the authorities. We can't guarantee that that will fall on the right ears here. Who knows? Maybe somebody yeah. in a situation similar. Most importantly, you don't blame yourself and you didn't deserve it. I just finished a film. Uh, it's a, it was fun. It was a 1970s style horror film. I like the 70s horror films. You know, they're, they're more suspense and, and a good story. I'm not allowed to talk about it because we just wrapped. But when I'm able to, I will tell Vinny all the details. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. We have a little section that we do every week, a uh, music quiz and kind of fun thing. Uh, before we jump on that, I want to make sure that's something you're even interested in doing. Of course. I don't know if I'll be good at it. I asked Vinny to yeah, contact we... you and find out what kind of stuff you're into so we didn't bark up the wrong tree with this. I like all music. Certain things I get more than others. All right. So the first thing that we have here is a, a three-question music lyric quiz. Uh -uh. I'll recite a couple lines from a song. What we want you to do is to identify the following lyric and the name of the song and the name of band, if you know it. And you've got Vinny and Jimmy here to help you. They are your uh, lifelines. Okay. Does that work for you? Okay. All right. <laughs> we'll see. The finger. She's the always finger. trying to get in trouble. Whose finger was that? <laughs> You're swinging by again, looking for more trouble. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right. So if you don't know it, and I, I, I assume you do, you probably know these things. If not, you can lean into either one of these guys, Jimmy or Vinny. They can help you with the answer. We'll start with this one. The first lyric is, so many days you pass me by, you see the tears standing in my eyes. You didn't stop to make me feel better. What is the following line, the name of the band, and the name of the song? I need a lifeline on that one. Go ahead one more time, but I okay. think I'm going with Jimmy. So many days you pass me by, you see the tears standing in my eyes. You didn't stop to make me feel better. Oh, I know. I It's a, it's a Motown. Uh, lifeline, lifeline. I'll do Jimmy. Uh, does Vinny know? That's going to piss me off. I can't. So many days you pass me by, I see the tears standing in my eyes. You didn't stop. To make me feel better. Is that the Postman song? 
It is the postman postman. song. What What is is the line, Jimmy? Uh, Leaving me uh, something or a letter, a box, or I can't remember. (laughs) That's it, something. Can anybody finish that for Jimmy? By leaving me a card or a letter, please, Mr. Postman by the Marvelettes. A note or a letter, please tell me. (laughs) A note. Well, you know what? If if Jimmy's uh, frame unfreezes there, we'll go ahead and give you the point. I just see a picture of Jimmy with his hand over his face. (laughs) Jimmy, is your uh, screen ever going to unfreeze? I think he's gone completely. Hello. Hello. (laughs) Please, Mr. Postman, by the Marvelette. Card or a letter. All right. So you're one for one. Somehow we managed to get that one. (laughs) That was pathetic. The next one is, take my hand. Don't be afraid. I'm going to prove every word I say. I'm advertising love for free. What's the next line? Name of the band, name of the song. Am I too young for this stuff? Possible. Take my hand. Don't be afraid. I'm going to prove every word I say. I'm advertising love for free. Uh, Vinny. I think Jimmy might know this one. I trusted Jimmy. Hey, I eked it out eventually, right? I got, we got there eventually. Okay, Jimmy. I think it's, uh, I'm advertising love for free. So you can place your ad with me. Correct. Uh, it's called uh, Hard to Handle Now. Correct. Hard to Handle. Either handle band now. that did that, can you Who tell me? Can that? anybody tell me? Who did that? Definitely the Black Crows did one version. Wow. Did- Black Crows did the 80s version, the Motown version. Does anybody know that one? I just no. remember being sampled. Uh, that was Otis Redding, but Black, Black Crows uh-huh. were. Sam and Dave. Otis Redding. It was Otis, Otis Redding. Redding. I said I, Otis Redding, and he still says Sam and Dave. But <laughs> <laughs> your hair looks good. Okay, so technically really we're still two for two. You see how this works. The final one. Oh God! All your sickness, I can suck it up. Throw it at me, can shrug it off. There's one thing, baby, I don't understand. What's the next line? Name of the band. Name of the song. All your sickness, I can suck it up. Throw it at me, I can shrug it off. There's one thing, baby, I can't understand. Okay, I gotta go with the lifeline. Uh, let me see, Vinny. You know this one? I like cheese with my ham. Let's go with the other lifeline. Boy, you're a pro. <laughs> Something out of a loving man. I, I have no idea. I don't know. Wow. Oh, you're drinking. I'm already. Okay. Well, the line is you keep on telling me I ain't your kind of man. The Rolling Stones, Beast of Burden, which they played on oh. Saturday Night Live. <laughs> which I. Which Jimmy already said. You had the cadence wrong. Yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna oh, no, I gave all you the off. cadence. All your oh, sickness, wow. I can suck it up. Throw it at me, I can shrug no. it off. There's one thing, but baby, I don't understand. You, you keep like on that. telling me I ain't your kind of man. Ain't I rough enough? <laughs> oh, okay. Now I got it. Okay. You didn't, mi- you didn't mick it up? Unfortunately, I am not mick. I wish I was, oh, but... I'm luck. It's racist. <laughs> okay, you still did pretty good. Two of three. Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, you're doing great. So the next part is... Is another three questions. These are movie quotes. All you have to do is tell me what movie they were from and who said it. We have a movie team here. Okay, the first one is, you know, I got to keep cooled out. I got to keep all you people happy. I got to have all the ideas and I got to do it alone. Jimmy froze up again. No, no, I just stopped moving. You know, I got to keep them cooled out. I got to keep all you people happy. I got to have all the ideas and I got to do it alone. I'll give you a hint. This is a 70s movie with a famous Italian actor. Reciting that line. She guessed Al Pacino. He's correct with that. That is Al Pacino. You just got to pick the movie. Okay. This is not Glenn, Gar- Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, is it? Uh, Glenn Gary's an 80s movie. I think. This would be a 70s movie. 70s. No. But then I later on, he says Attica, Attica. Oh, Attica. shit. Dog Day Afternoon is my favorite. All right. Favorite. Well, you got it. Dog Day Afternoon. Yeah. There you go. You got it. It's my favorite movie. Okay. One for one on the movies. The next one is, uh, this one might be a little tougher, but we'll see if we can sort it out. The quote is very brief. It's, yo, Oh, breakfast, come and get it. <laughs> Friday, <laughs> Friday the 13th, part five, a new beginning. And it's a uh, Reg Shivaros. Absolutely. Reg- Absolutely. You're two for two. You know how many times we do a, a line from the movie that the person's been in and they're like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> really? Well, you did it a few uh, months ago and I guessed it. The spider. So this is the last one of these, the famous quote, only one is a wanderer. Two together are always going somewhere. Oh. That's a great quote. Only one is a wanderer. Two together are always going somewhere. Somewhere. 
the scene <laughs> precedes them going to the ocean where they go into a Spanish tower. It's a Hitchcock film. Oh, yeah. Vertigo. Vertigo. All Vertigo. right. Three for three on the. That's a great movie. <laughs> I haven't seen yes, that in so long. Five of six with the lifelines here. <laughs> no, you did good. You did good. You did great. You, uh, you're really good at this. I mean, you came up with great stuff. Well, I appreciate yeah. that. You know, I can only identify the horror ones. So. You're very <laughs> impressive. <laughs> Well, don't speak too soon yet, because this last part is the most ridiculous thing ever. You remember back in the day when they had a, a little game? It was mostly for kids. It was called Mad Libs. Yes. Well, we write our own little story, and we basically follows that same rule where I'll ask you some word types, and we'll fit it into a story that we've written for you. I'll send him the story, and he'll read it back to you. I have no idea how to do it, but go ahead. I'll do it. Right. The first one is just a number, any number. Five. A profession, any profession. Firefighter. Another type of profession. Prostitute. I have to try my best not to start cracking up before. Right. <laughs> I'm giving you something to work with here. <laughs> a type of snack food. Doritos. A terrible song that always comes on the radio. I wear my sunglasses at night. <laughs> <laughs> This is already going places. That's not a night. It's at night. At, at night. night. A city, any city. Cincinnati. Wow. That's where I'm from. I've never been. You don't want to go there. You're not missing anything. <laughs> You're not missing anything. And in that same vibe, a terrible place to visit. It'd be a town or whatever. Topeka, Kansas. I've <laughs> been there too. There's a lot of agriculture there. An adjective. Racy. Racy. A I'm noun. A child. <laughs> Oh, get this. <laughs> Jimmy can read this without stumbling through it. A type of animal. Dog. <laughs> Someone famous named James. Cagney. A musical instrument. Violin. Another adjective. Beautiful. A noun. A uh, tree. An amount of money. Any amount of money. Thousand dollars. Any number. Ten. Ten. Another number, please. Fifteen. A 70s TV show. One day at a time. So you're pretty good at this. Some kind of liquid. Vodka. A state. Massachusetts. Something that flies. A crow. Black crow. You ask my father, he'll tell you hermit crabs can fly. Long story. <laughs> they can't. If they're thrown, they can fly. Body part. Any body part. Legs. Another word for jerk. Putts. An expensive activity. Water polo. Some kind of critter. Uh, a gopher. I'm literally trying not to laugh as I half read this. No read. <laughs> a, a, a female superhero. Wonder Woman. A rare animal. A white tiger. A number. 22. A year in the future. 2280. Right, I think I got them all. I'm going to email this over to Jimmy. He's the reader of the story. Okay. And he's going to make it. <laughs> this will be my moment to show you uh, what my father bought me for Christmas. Oh, ah, fantastic. Ago. Great. Jimmy's frozen. Uh, Jimmy, don't freeze up during the reading of the story again. Are you there, Jimmy? How about now? How about now? I'm here. Are you, can you hear me? Can you hear I me? I just sent it to you. Yep. How's his feed been? Has it been working or is he going to freeze up? so slow here. Oh, boy. He's frozen up now. You know, you might have to read Am I? You might have to have Vinny read one. Jimmy's <clears throat> gear is su making the show suffer. Very. All right. Do you have it now? There he is. I have it, uh, but I, I mean, you, you can't hear me. I can hear you. Well, give it a shot, and if, if we can't do it, one of us will do it. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Melanie goes psycho. <laughs> one morning after arriving at her job, <laughs> Melanie decided she was sick and tired of working as a firefighter and moonlighting as a prostitute. <laughs> 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 Her boss had asked her to take a cozy $5 in cash to the bank and deposit it on behalf of their client. She grabbed her keys and as many Doritos as she could fit in her purse. On the way out of town, she counted the money, laughed, and sang along with sunglasses at night and shouted, Goodbye, suckers. I'm leaving Cincinnati for good. <laughs> She had decided she would start a new life and live out her years in the town of Topeka, Kansas. She drove and drove and drove and finally that night arrived at a little desert roadside sleeper motel, the Racy Child Motel. <laughs> <laughs> At the motel office, she met a very strange fellow. Handsome Jimmy was his name, and he loved spending his days doing dog taxidermy. Jimmy was named after James Cagney and played violin in the local band Beautiful Trees. Melanie explained that she had driven all day and needed a room immediately. They agreed on a price of $1,000 for the night, and she was given the key to room 10. Melanie got a weird vibe from Jimmy and decided that when she got inside the room, that she was not going to take a shower because she didn't trust that he wouldn't attempt to break in and stab her. 15 time. In fact, she decided to sleep with her clothes on in case that weird motel clerk was to burst in her room and try something creepy. <laughs> 
<laughs> Melanie sat on the bed, pondering the day's events. She knew she might have a hard time falling asleep, so she quickly downed a pint of vodka that she found in a one-day-at-a-time sippy cup on the counter next to the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Off to sleep she went. During the night, she dreamed of visiting a town on the coast of Massachusetts and being swarmed by black crows. The black crows attacked all the townspeople and pecked their legs until they fell off. Melanie was chased by the black crows high up a Spanish bell tower, where she got dizzy and fell from the arched window one billion feet onto the rooftop below. <laughs> In a flash, Melanie awoke, happy that it was all just a dream. She wiped her eyes to reveal a towering creep in the corner of the room, wearing a wet hockey mask, swinging a bloody machete. Oh my God, is that you, Jason? It wasn't Jason. Okay, Roy, cut it out. It wasn't Roy. Aha, Tommy Jarvis, you trickster. <laughs> it wasn't Tommy Jarvis. Okay, I give up. Which one of you putzes is it? Because I got a bag of money and I need to get some sleep so I can go water poloing tomorrow. <laughs> the mask flew off, scaring Melanie nearly to death. It was Reggie. Pam, <laughs> you scared of a gopher? You scared of a gopher on a string? You scared of a rubber gopher on a string? <laughs> <laughs> Reggie, that joke is 37 years old and you're 50. And what gopher are you even talking about? None of this makes any sense. And by the way, I'm not your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Melody sprung up awake again. It was another dream, a dream inside a dream. Just then the door swung open to reveal a surreal vision. It was Jimmy's mom, Joan Mustang herself, dressed in a Wonder Woman outfit. <laughs> Tipsy from a half bottle of Beaujolais and too many pot brownies. <laughs> Hit the road, Kinnaman, or you and I are going to have it out. I can't have you creeping on any of the fellas in this town. <laughs> Melanie was having none of it. I came here for a new life and to start a white tiger ranch. I don't care about your towny fellas or your creepy motel. What Joan Mustang didn't realize was that in the meantime, Melanie had grabbed a taxidermy dog off the bedside table. Blah! She bonked Joan Mustang square on the head knocking her right out of the window onto a spiked tractor harrow. What are the odds? <laughs> Writhing on the barb, Stone's mask was peeled back completely, revealing that it wasn't Joan Mustang at all. It was handsome Jimmy dressed like his mother, dressed like Wonder Woman. The people <laughs> of the town rejoiced. They burned the motel to the ground and erected a 22-foot statue of Melanie Kinnaman, which <laughs> proudly stood on the site of the creepy old motel until the sun went supernova in the year 2280. Thank the almighty for Melanie Kinnaman. Wow. Great story. Put them all together. Uh, now, uh, leading up to the interview, I was told that you were a big fan of Alfred Hitchcock. So we incorporated yeah. a bunch of Alfred Hitchcock oh, memes. Into this great. One. It was great. And I gave you some good lines. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> no, you did a great job. We, we did a terrible yeah. job. That reminds me. I understand that there actually is a Jimmy's Credit Cuisine this week. Do we have one of those? Maybe. Would you like to lead it in? Let's go to the clip. <laughs> Having a Jimmy's Credit Cuisine, I actually made one myself, and I'm going to take all the credit for it. Let's go to that clip.
What about Vinny's clip? You got one this week? Sure. Why not? We're going to go to the clip. <laughs> yeah, let's go to the clip. I'm Lisa. I'm the queen. Gino, what movie is this? When does it start? What, what is it start? What do you want? I'm busy listening to bands that no one's ever heard of before or ever will again. I want a movie with jump scares. Lots of jump scares. Hey, hey, fuckers. How you doing? Sorry I'm late. I was farting everywhere. Vinny, don't show any more dance music videos. Vinny, play me a movie with lots of jump scares. Lots and lots of jump scares. Alan, my love. Hey, everybody. Sorry I'm late. I was busy avoiding movies I had to read. Sizzler! 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 Sizzler, where's your lotion? I have no idea what you're talking about, man. Hey, Paul, what's up? Hey, guys, anybody got a cigarette? No, you did not see me play with my dolls again. Number 125 on my list, Tourist Trap. Hey there, everybody. This week's earworm is going to be a little bit of a surprise. And I'll leave you with this. If this doesn't make you want to get up and dance, there is something wrong with you, and you should seek immediate medical help. I'll post a link in the comments. Cheers. Okay, Jimmy, why don't you go ahead and uh, sign off for us, and then we'll let her go. And she can get some sleep and start having these crazy dreams. <laughs> I think she still needs to eat dinner. She said she didn't yeah, eat dinner yet. Yeah, no kidding. <clears throat> That's it for this week, weirdos. Thanks for joining us once again on Live <laughs> Oh, my I'll God. I... We're keeping that in. Yeah, he's just checked in. out completely. What I'll happened? Go, I'll handle this. You went You went goodbye, as you like you always do. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, no, I started talking. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look. Thanks, I hope we can get you to give us some parting words or anything that you want to promote. Oh, I'm going to be doing some conventions around the country. I'm going to post them on my Facebook page. Uh, I just wrapped a film. Uh, it's a 1970s horror film. I can't give you the working title. I'm going to put right. all this stuff on social media, but that's what's coming up. And it was great spending this hour with you guys. Thank you so much. Sarah, have a great 2022. Woo! <laughs> All the way up to 2280 when the sun goes super. There you go. That's right. Yeah. We had a great yes, time. Sorry for some weird technical issues. That's but okay. I blame myself. Yeah, we blame Jimmy for this completely. I'm going to make my AFC championship prediction. <laughs> I'm predicting that the Bengals will beat the Chiefs in overtime, a score Whoa. of 27 to 24. No, no way. That's too much. They are going to face the Rams in the Super Bowl and win. No, the, no, the Rams stink. Come on, that's not going to happen. Niners all the way. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Niners, Chiefs. Okay, this is be my first time. Okay. <clears throat> Tonight's story, 